everyone friends today we are going to discuss the introduction of microprocessor microcontroller and embedded system in this microprocessor microcontroller and embedded system the basic difference is that microprocessor is made for the general purpose processing or general purpose chip whereas microcontroller is a special purpose chip which is designed to perform a particular task the microprocessor and microcontrollers are generally used in so many applications the main applications of microprocessors are they are used for vacuum cleaners for floor cleaning they are using for the door lock systems in the drone system remote controls temperature control and microcontrollers are available everywhere so these microcontrollers and microprocessor and embedded systems are major concern for studying and uh, developing some new applications in the field of electronics microprocessor applications are further enhanced in touch panel solution wireless microphone e balance gps larger or tracker led controller board arduino record and playback security system ip cam and camera lens control security code keyboards barcode recorders led tv lighting pro control these are some applications which microcontroller and microprocessor and embedded systems are using and with the help of these applications we can um, automate our system um, so the concept here arises that when microprocessor was invented and how the process is going on till now the microprocessor history tell us that in 1971 first microprocessor 4004 of 4 bit with clock rate of 740 kilohertz was invented here as we can see in this table the data rate is increasing from year on to now and the clock frequency or cpu clock rate is also increasing so as we can see in 4004 and intel core i7 processor the data rate increases from 4 bit to 64 bit whereas the clock rate increases from 740 kilohertz to 2.92 gigahertz to 4.2 gigahertz the data rate is something like take an example of a vehicle like you have a vehicle of maruti car and uh, only four person can sit properly on this car so further the technology is advancing and some tracks is introduced so that tracks carries eight people furthermore the advancement in technology than minibus which carries 16 people at a time then there is a big bus which carries 32 persons at a time then another volvo buses which carries 64 people at the same time so what did, what does this mean this means that people are increasing day by day and if we want to travel from one place to another place we need some fast transportations and large capacity to carry more people from one place to another 
same case is happening in the microprocessor and microcontrollers. Initially, when microprocessor was developed, it was a 4-bit processor and the data rate is increasing day by day and speed is also increasing day by day. So CPU clock rate, what, what do you mean by this CPU clock rate? CPU clock rates are the clock rates which means that let's take an example of uh, traveling from one place to another. If you want to travel from one place to another, then there are different mode of transportation. Let's take an example of if you travel by car, you will reach from Delhi to Punjab in 8 hours. If you travel by train, you will reach in 6 hours. If you travel by aeroplane, you will reach in 1 hour. So, but I am going to try to explain you that when speed is increasing, you reach your destination easily and fastly. So same case is happening here. In CPU clock rate, initially 740 kilohertz frequency to transfer data of 4 bits into one place to another place is available. Right now, Intel Core i7 processor has different cores, single core, dual core, quad core, octa cores. So they have frequency range from 2.9 GHz to 4.2 GHz. So 64 bits are transferred in a second at this rate. So the processing speed is very fast right now. So 8085 microprocessor is of 8 bit processor which works at 3 to 6 MHz. It is very important and very special 8085 which is used by most of industries in the initial days. So we are going to discuss a block diagram of 8085 microprocessor in the next slide. So we can see in this block diagram that 8085 microprocessor hold different processing elements and these elements are divided into different parts. In the bottom there is a timing and control unit which control the different operations like read, write operations and there is an interrupt reset, hardware interrupt reset, reset in, reset out interrupts, input output memory bars. There is on the right side, there is address buffer, data address buffer. These buffers are used to separate the address and data lines and hold the data for some time to synchronize the transmission from one place to the another place. These data buffer hold 8-bit data to transfer in a smooth manner. Then there is a register bank which consists of temporary registers with W and Z. 8-bit registers are both available. B, C, D, E, H, L, all these registers are 8-bit registers but when we combine the 8-bit registers like B and C, it form a 16-bit registers and when we combine D, E, H, L, B, it, hmm, those are considered as a 16-bit register. register. There is stack pointer, program counter, and incrementer and decrementer all are 16-bit registers. These are called as a special purpose registers. All these registers are combined as a register selection group. 
with the multiplexers and multiplexers are connected with the data buses. In the blue line you can see all these lines are shown as a data lines. So let's take an example that you want to read data. So there is an instruction MBI A comma 0 to hex. So what does this mean? MBI A has something some opcode which means that you have to take immediate input of 0 to hex into our system. So in the accumulator you have 0 to hex. So when you place this instruction the opcode is recognized by the instruction decoder and machine cycle and instruction registers. When instruction register detect this MBA A02 hex command, then it convert the opcode and data separately. Instru instruction decoder decode the instructions and find out controlling timing and control unit to give the signal to the microprocessor. Then from 0 to accumulator, accumulator have 0 to hex. So that 0 to hex is transferred from accumulator to the arithmetic logical unit. Or what is the next instruction? Then you, it will find. The next instruction is add or you can place another data in the A. Move B comma A. So in the in the a uh, move b uh, yeah you can place mbi b comma 03 hex so mbi b means some opcode so it means that you have to take input of 03 hex immediately into the b register so here is a temporary register which is called as a temporary register and uh, b is a register in which we are going to place 03 hex. So 03 hex is placed in B register. So you are going to add two numbers A and B. So how you can do it? MBI A comma B, which means that accumulator has a content of 0 to hex which is added with a temporary register which holds the value of a B register 0 3 hex and combination it will give a result of 5 hex which is stored in the accumulator. So next step is you are going to store that 0 5 hex at any location. So we are using a command move a comma or uh, move c comma a which means that accumulator a has a content of 0 5 which moves toward which register c register so in this way the whole process goes on particular instruction is divided into two parts one is the opcode and another one is the data so there are different timing and control instructions in which we can find out which is the data and which is the instruction so interrupt control block is given about the data bus in which different interrupts are given those interrupts which are inside means that they are all interrupts from outward to the microprocessor whereas NTA bar is a interrupt which is going out from the microprocessor which means that this microprocessor give the interrupt acknowledgement means I have received your interrupt and I am processing on that interrupt. Then 
on the right side there is a serial in input output control which has SID and SOD pins. SID means the serial input data whereas SOD means serial output data. The arrow shows that SID is the inward arrow toward a microprocessor whereas SOD is the outer mm, direction is outward which means that data is going to be outside. So here in the bottom address buses and data buses both are initially multiplexed because 8085 is a 40 pin I see which has 8 data buses and 15 uh, total number of uh, address buses are 16 so 80 0 to 87 address and data buses are multiplexed ALE signal is used to demultiplex the address and data buses. So when you are applying some address to store the particular data, you need ALE signal to separate address and data buses. In this way, microprocessor detect that you are going to store address or you are going to store data. Moving further, there is an introduction of a microcontroller. Microcontroller and microprocessor, there is a simple difference. Microprocessor is a general purpose register. General purpose register means that it has to perform multitasking. Whereas, microcontroller is a special purpose chip which means that it is de designed for a particular task so microcontroller perform only one task which is embedded or programmed into the chip so there I have given you so many examples like there is a biometric system so biometric system is an embedded system which consists of microprocessor, microcontroller and designed for a particular application. 8051 microcontroller is the most popular 8-bit microcontroller which has 4 kilobyte on-chip ROM. 4 kilobyte on-chip ROM means ROM is a read-only memory. It is a programmable memory if you write a program on this memory you cannot erase that programming because it is a read only memory whereas 128 byte of ROM which is uh, RAM which is random access memory we can change our program while writing another program using external devices. In 8051 there are two timers, four input output ports, one serial port, six interrupt source, eight bit data buses, sixteen bit address buses. If sixteen bit address buses are there then two raised to our sixteen equal to sixty four kilobyte of external memory we can interface with the help of is 05 on microcontroller. It has 40 pin IC work on a plus 5 volt, 5 volt power supply. The block diagram of 805 on microcontroller and in the dotted line 8052 microcontroller is shown. This figure represents that there are there are serial ports which has TXT and RXT. So TXT and RXT are the transmission data and receive data. The arrow shows that which data is going inward or which data is going outward. There is four input output ports. Port 0, 1, 2, 3. All four ports are of 8 pins. 
there is a bus controller in which read war write for ea ale psn all these signals are controlled by the bus controller then there are two timer in case of 8051 and in case of 8052 there are three timers in 8051 there are 128 kilobyte uh, bytes of ram whereas in case of 8052 256 bytes of ram in case of 8051 it has 4 kilobyte of rom whereas in case of 8052 it has 8 kilobyte of rom cpu is connected with the oscillator and interrupt controller interrupt controller has some input from the interrupt structures the there are two type of interrupt structure there is external interrupt and the internal interrupts external interrupt has int0 and int1 which is connected with the microprocessor or microcontroller which is called as a cpu with the input of reset signal so reset is used to reset the computer from initial conditions like it start executing or booting your microprocessor from 0000 hex location then we come to our introduction to embedded system an embedded system is a computer system which with a dedicated function so it is a combination of microprocessor and microcontroller in embedded system as earlier i have told you that biometric is a embedded system so embedded system works with a combination of microprocessor and microcontrollers arm lpc 2148 microcontroller is the most powerful 32 bit microcontroller it has two ports port 0 of 32 pins port 1 of 16 pins it has 31 general purpose 32 bit registers only 16 registers are visible at a time there are some other registers like R13 which is called as a stack pointer R14 link register R15 program counter all these are words on the principle of the risk instruction set risk instruction set is the instruction set which is called as a reduced instruction set SPI is your, uh, this LPC 214 head has SPI which is serial peripheral interface having full duplex means it can transmit and receive simultaneously it has I2C short communication short range communication it has SWI instructions SWI means software instructions interrupt instructions then it has data type support of 8 bit, 16 bit, and 32 bit. It works on a power supply of 3.3 volt. The architecture of a embedded system is shown here. On the right side, all input output devices, GPIO, general purpose input output peripherals, are connected to the data buses. Then there are some interfaces, UART, universal, asynchronous receiver transmitter, then I2C, SPI, PWM. PWM is the pulse width modulation which is connected to the data buses again. There is ADC, ADC is analog to digital conversion. Our day to day work or environment is analog but our microprocessor, microcontroller, embedded system all are digitals. 
So digitals are in the form of one and zeros, whereas analog in the form of a sine wave. So ADC work here to convert analog signal into digital signal and DAC work for digital to analog signals. So Cortex M050 MHz processor which is connected to the memory, flash ROM and S trans. So this is the simple simplified block diagram of embedded system. So MCU application development, how the application development work right here. We have PC IDE in which we perform the programming part. We have MCU and IC new link in which I see new link is connected to the PC IDE. Then MCU has different ports to connect the interfacing of a motor, of a USB card, of a stepper motor or any other motor. So this PC IDE is developed with the help of the Kale software. Kale software is used to design your program and ICE new link software is used to link between your computer and MCU unit. And this way we can connect. There are some other peripherals which are GPIO. GPIO is general purpose input output peripherals, there are ultrasonic sensors, TNEX, ADC, ADC is an analog to digital converter, PWM, pulse width modulation, GPIO, general purpose input output is connected with the motors, SPI, SPI is the software or special purpose interrupts, I2C is a short range communications, then UART, UART is a universal asynchronous receiver transmitters. So we have designed our project in design for home automation system and keyword recognition system with the help of 89C52 microcontroller. Earlier I have explained you 8051 and 8052. There are two or three main differences, the memory difference. Okay. So, in this block diagram, first we take the space signal to mic into our computer. With the help of MATLAB, we extract the information of an input signal. Then we give output to the EPD. EPD is an endpoint detection. If a space signal has different pulses, different noises, then our signal is distorted and if it take so many long pulses, then our speech signal is going to be broadened and it consume large bandwidth. So EPD is a block which detect the silent portions by defining some threshold that if the signal is above the threshold or below the threshold it is considered as a silence otherwise it will pass to the next block which is pre-emphasis. Pre-emphasis is nothing but to emphasize or increase the bandwidth or increase the spectrum or in increase the amplitude of uh, input signals and it its output it passes to the framing block which convert the space signal into number of frames because our space signal is in the uh, we have to uh, perform the male frequency substrate coefficients in the frequency domain so we have to take the small portion of the blocks. 
So that's why we are performing framing here. We divide the complete length of the frame into 400 milliseconds frames. Then we perform the windowing method. Windowing method is using, with the help of the windowing method, we can find the uh, particular changes in the signal and passes to the district Fourier transform, which convert the signal into the Fourier and frequency domain. Mel frequency filter bank is used to filter the different components of unwanted components in, in, in the signals and perform a DCT. DCT is a discrete cosine transform which convert, uh, convert the signal into the time domain and data substral energy substral coefficient is generated with the help of this so there is a unique pattern of a speech signal is going to be stored in the data base of the computer system so in this way we are going to perform the uh, database perform the database creation of uh, keywords like if we say forward, reverse, fan on, fan off, all these keywords are first going to be stored in the database by the user. So this home automation system is designed for disabled persons. We have given our paper URL www.ijaest.iserp.org and we have given our YouTube link in which you can see the working of this project. So this project performed the keyboard key, keyword recognitions for the disabled persons, those who are not able to walk. With the help of the voice command, they can control the wheelchair direction and all the home appliances like fan on, fan off, light on, light off, these all home appliances are controlled with the help of the voice commands. So next project is Arduino based automatic wireless weather station which work on the principle of the weather monitoring. There are so many sensors used in this project to detect the weather conditions and this paper was published in IEEE conference and the DOI is also given in the paper and there is a video link is also available. You can see the video link how this paper is designed. This is another example of a, a robo car is given here you can see the platform in, from where you can buy this robo car and there is a youtube video on the channel you can see that video channel also if you like this video please share this video subscribe this video and like this video. Thank you very much.